welcome to part six of this student build, the Telecaster build that we're doing for the students of a college luthier program that I've been teaching. And last episode, we, we went and we installed the frets um, on our Telecaster neck. And so this episode, we're going to start talking about contouring the back of the neck. And that'll be the stage that the students are going to be working on this week. What we're trying to think about is how we want to do that. We've got the back of the neck to the headstock, which is perfectly flat at this point. And then from the heel all the way up to the headstock. And then we've got that fender swoop in the front. I think that's the official term for it. We got the swoop there that comes into the headstock. But now we've got to figure out how to carve this out. And that carve has got to be on a taper because typically around the first fret, and it can obviously vary, but I'm using about 21-ish uh, millimeters. And then somewhere around the 12th fret marker, we are going to have approximately 24 millimeters. Plus or minus a little bit is kind of the standard go-to dimensions. That's more of a classic, you know, Fender vibe to it. And so that's what we're trying to figure out how to do. And there's several different ways we can get there. And there's a lot of different tools that we can use to get there. And the thing about it is, is I'm trying to do it in a way, or at least show maybe one or two ways that my, my students can accomplish this with the tools that we have readily available to us at the school, you know, without all those specialty things that are maybe CNC's and, and uh, jigs that maybe I've used before on previous videos, if you look it up on how to do that. We're looking for other ways we can do it with typical hand tools and router tables and things like that that we have at the school. So I know in building this plan, I mean, Smack some guitar works. It's got to start with excellence, right? But how do we get it there? How do we... Hey, Steve, you're so smart. Why don't you just build it yourself? Who is that? Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Steve, thanks for having me in your shop today. Hey, Matt, man. I'm glad to be here at Maximum Guitar. It is a pleasure to, Thank have, you. to have Matt from Texas Toast. For those of you who don't know who he is, I don't know where you've been living all these years. Uh, <laughs> But we've got Matt coming over to kind of show some techniques of how he learned to carve these necks like way back in like 50 years ago when he... <laughs> <laughs> it was it was almost that long. It was it was 30 years ago when I built my first guitar and that was at Roberto Van and I thought, "Hey, why don't I bring some of the tools and some of the techniques that I learned?" And we'll we'll show you guys how uh, how we did it the OG way, uh -huh. and then I got a few other ideas that that might make uh, might speed up the process. We're gonna do it ourselves because we're so smart, but we're gonna we're gonna start with excellence, Absolutely. and we're gonna keep it classy too. It's gonna <laughs> be right. good. All right, so I'm really looking forward to this episode. Hopefully, everyone out there in YouTube world and my students who are then watching this as their homework assignment prior to uh, our class this weekend. Hopefully you're going to enjoy and get a lot of it too. So let's get set up and get right to it. Eh? I'm really looking forward to making a big mess in your shop because <laughs> it's way cleaner than my shop. <laughs> All right. We'll see if you can do that. All right. Where do we want to start, man? Well, Steve, I can't help but notice that the neck that you have yeah. looks a little different from the neck that I have. Yours is bigger. Well, it's genetics. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is mahogany because... Um, I knew I was going to be hand shaping a neck today, okay. and it's been a long time since I've done any shaping by hand because yeah. of the tools that we use at Texas Toast are all power. Mm -hmm. um, but I brought I, so my neck looks different from yours, and my tool selection looks a little different from yours too. All right, so, so this will be cool because we can walk through some of uh, you know what what we do, what you have, sure. and what I have, and the different ways that uh, that people can can do this. Yeah, well compare and contrast a little mm -hmm. bit tool wise. Mm -hmm. why, don't, why don't you start? Okay, well so this is a this is a neck that I'm uh, working on right now. It's actually going in a flying V and you can see it's got the arrowhead headstock. Nice. But this is um, this is a mahogany neck and um, so I brought it again mostly because the tools that I'm going to be using uh, will be will plow through mahogany like it's nobody's business. Yeah. So a couple of the ones that I brought that I this is a dragon rasp here yep. and um, if you don't have a dragon rasp invest in one because yeah. it will last forever and it's a monster. Yeah. Uh, I use this one all the time, but way back before I had a Dragon Rasp, I had some real basic tools that you can buy at any hardware store, and that is okay. this uh, Sureform plane. Um, I'm not sure if this one is a Sureform plane or just a Sureform style yeah. uh, 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 cutter, 
but I did bring my Sureform plane because this is what we used at Roberto Venn a long time ago, and I want to show you guys how we did that. Yeah, that's a um, hardware store item too. This, yeah, I think I think you've got maybe twelve or fifteen dollars worth okay. of, of equipment right here. All right, and you can good. shape the entire neck with these guys. Um, I also brought uh, a straight edge. This is you don't have to have this straight edge, but I brought it because it's long enough to put on my neck. Yep. Um, but short enough to not bounce between my volute area and my heel. Uh, I brought some calipers and a pencil, and I also brought this guy, that's which handy. is. If you want to see how your nose looks, on <laughs> no, this will be good for, for when we're shaping the neck. We can we can get an idea of where we are on yeah. the neck and make sure we're consistent throughout. And I know you like consistency, so I wanted I to bring this tool. Yes, actually, even if even if I was making guitars with someone who didn't like consistency, <laughs> this this is an invaluable yeah. tool. Now, who makes that one? Uh, this is this is actually a really cheap one that I think I got at Harbor Freight. This is mm -hmm. maybe let's say five bucks worth. Yeah. Uh, the the one potential drawback is it doesn't have a lot of fingers, uh, so okay. unlike the the steel one yeah. that you would use, uh, I don't know what those are actually specifically for. Yeah, they they sell them at Home Depot. They're yep. not made for guitar building necessarily. They're made for finding contours. Yeah, uh, that one is is better, but I couldn't find mine. Okay, uh, I think Mrs. Texas Toast stole it and yeah. it never got put back in the shop. Yeah, that happens. So so I brought this guy because this is one I use the most. It, it, it works really fast. It, it's good enough for what I need it to do today. Okay. So we brought it. Cool. And it's an invaluable portion. So, so yeah, you can shape your own guitar necks with no power equipment and very, very little uh, uh, cash out mm -hmm. um, in hand tools. Right. So what do you got? Well, uh, I mean, typically I would involve some power tools in, mm -hmm. in, in what I'm doing like you would normally. Yeah. Uh, but again, yeah, I, we're... Anything, I, here's my, my thing. Anytime you can use power tools, do it. Yeah. But it takes finesse, and this these take finesse too. But you you can screw up a lot slower. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's the beautiful thing about using good quality rasps. Now I got a couple different than what you have for hand tools, um, but I've got this uh, right here. Um, Shinto, the Shinto, the Japanese rasp. This is actually hacksaw blades, and it's got a coarse side and a fine side. And I find that that is nice because it is a very flat surface. Mm -hmm. So as I kind of work, I can work linear up the neck and kind of keep a nice flat profile. I've never used one of those. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what that's like. Yeah, we'll get get out some uh, we'll get out some scrap water or something okay. and, and let you kind of mess with it because okay. it, it really has a nice feel to it. And the coarse side is great for starting, fine side for for uh, getting a little bit closer to your final dimension. Yeah. Uh, but I also like you like love the dragon rasp. These are the smaller versions of mm -hmm. them. Um, but I've got the coarse one and the coarse one and the fine one. I should invest in some other because when when I bought mine, this is the only one that was available. Yeah. This thing's ancient. Yeah. So yeah, I don't. So I think they have two sizes. Okay. And uh, and of the two sizes, they have a coarse and a fine of each one. Okay. So I'll start with the coarse. And then I'll, uh, as I get closer again, I'll, I'll do the fine. And I love the way these point and the little bit of contour yeah. to it because I can really kind of get up into these areas mm -hmm. and work them nicely. Uh, now, this other one, this, <laughs> this, is, this is the hoss. Uh, <laughs> it is the hoss. That's almost a power tool right there. <laughs> this, I, I haven't used this on a neck yet. I, I got to be quite candid there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I bought this because I read about a lot of people having success with farrier tools, okay? okay? These are used to shape, you know, horse hoofs yeah. and things like that. And so I bought this one a while ago and it's like, oh man, that's pretty aggressive. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but I did test it on just a block piece of wood. Yeah. And I was surprised how, how smooth it did cut. So. I may give it a shot. You don't want to get kicked in the face with, you know, with a rough pony. Yeah. Dude, I, I don't know what I would use one for, but I want one of those. I don't, I don't even know, but I, yeah. it's, it's, it looks cool. I think everybody needs to have one. I, if it looks cool, that's reason enough to buy it as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah. yeah. So, so those are basic tools. Now I, I may also build my taper into my neck using the safety planer because that is the attachment to the drill press. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we do have at the school. And so the students can create the taper that they need and then just kind of contour off of that taper. So I may do that for one of these necks in this demonstration video. And I think we should drag the router table out and remove as much material as we can with the router table. If it is, your neck is a fender style and is flat on the bottom. This one has, has an angled headstock, so I can't use the, yeah. the router table. But 
we could plow off a bunch with the router table and yeah. make it uh, make and that, it go. And that's a tool they have at the school, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. router table. They got several of them. So, you know, I am perfectly uh, good with showing the students how to do that and then allowing them to do it in the class to, to kind of get a head start on all that contouring. And it, it and because it's flat and because the router table has a bearing or the round over bit has a bearing, again, you'll have lots of consistency and while you could accelerate the mistakes, I think that a, a good round over bit and a little bit of forethought will go a long way to just removing a bunch of material quickly and then get you down to not very much hand work. Okay, so it sounds like there's a couple different techniques we're gonna try to show in this video. Hopefully mm -hmm. it doesn't become a two hour long video uh, that we can <laughs> edit it down to about 30 minutes. Okay. But, uh, but let's get going with, uh, with at least one of those techniques right now. All right, so this is the way that I was taught to shape necks back in the 80s when I was at Roberto Venn. And I've watched one of your videos with another luthier, and yep. there was a lot of um, line drawing, and there was a lot of this, that, and the others, and, and I'm not going to do that. We're going to wing it. Okay. We're going to draw two We're lines. skipping the lines. We're going to draw two lines. We're going to rough in our volute here. All right. And we're, like I say, we're really just going to rough it in. And uh, then I'm going to come over here. Now, I have drawn where my heel of my guitar ends and I'm just gonna draw a line there and I know the only reason I'm putting these lines here is so I don't go too far. All right. Now unlike the video where you guys went too close to the final thickness, yep. we're gonna actually go ahead and start shaping that. Okay. So we're just gonna start working this in. Using the sure form plane. I've got my I got your uh, my next clamp to the table mm -hmm. with your clamping system, and my gut is clamping in the other the other part. Yeah. And that's why Jesus gave me that big fat <laughs> gut. <laughs> so if we want to switch to our rasp, we can. That sure form plane will do it, but the dragon rasp will do it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Probably way it cuts. faster. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is gonna be a C-shaped neck when it's all said and done, but I don't wanna start breaking that corner mm -hmm. until the neck is, is, is more shaped than it yep. is now. So how far are you gonna stay away? Maybe eighth, quarter inch? Probably an eighth. Okay. Yeah. So once I start to establish that, I'll take my, my handy neck jig and I'll see I need to take a little more off of right here. Okay. So I'll put some uh, some witness marks there. Yeah, I'll just start. Start going for it. Okay, so we're actually getting pretty close here. Um, I want to I want to put a little more a little more of a carve or a curve right here but I think we're getting close. So I'm at about 900 thousandths right here, which is a little oversized, but I don't want to take it all the way down. What I want to do now is I want to move down to the heel area and I want to do exactly the same thing. Okay, so I've got my heel area and the neck or the headstock area pretty close to where they need to be and I've got this great big chunk in the middle. Um, and that's it, it's done. Yeah. The more you play, <laughs> The, the smoother that'll get. <laughs> <I'm soft. laughs> all right, all right. So now we're gonna switch gears. So we've got we've got our our contour is roughed out here, and it's about the thickness it needs to be. Right. And it's a little oversized. Same with uh, with the heel area. And now we're just gonna connect them. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. It really is kind of slicing, uh -huh. isn't it? That's looking good. Yeah. It's getting there quick. It's pretty quick, yeah. yeah. And you can feel there's a step yep. to right here, and there's a big step right there. We but still have to take that out. But it's almost the We're same. We're getting there, yeah. So you're going down pretty level. Check it's a good flat. idea to have, yeah, have your straight edge. Mm -hmm. So you can see yep. there's a good hump there. Almost an eighth right there. Yep. And another big chunk back here. Yep. So Connect the dots. Yeah, if you had your, uh, your safety planer, uh, that would be a good a good spot to use this. Or, yep. you know, not everybody has a drill press, but this tool is really affordable. So yeah, and you can do point. it. You know, good point. So it's actually 
pretty decent. Yeah, that's good. It's not, it's not too bad. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. So now, what I like to do is draw a bunch of lines going this way. All right. Which is opposite of what you guys were doing in the last video. Yep. Where you drew lines going this way. Right. But what I want to do is I want to make sure my neck looks the same from here down contour wise. And I can see I want a little more contour there. Okay. So I marked on the line where I put the gauge and then I move to the next one and so on. And it's actually, this one's actually okay. okay. But right here, I need to take a little more off. And, and my tool is kind of, kind of dodgy, but I moved. I can actually see it. I have a little more of a contour here than I do here. Mm -hmm. And I bet you I'm going to have one here and one here that I'll take down. Yeah. So just constantly go around and check. It was a big one right there. And that actually looks pretty good, but it bounced back to this side. So if you have stadia lines and lines where you witness marks, where you know you need to start removing more material, you can remove said material, come back to your witness mark, Check it again. And check and say, okay, it's looking a little better, but I still have a, a bit of a high, high patch there. Yep. So we'll just go ahead and clean some of that up. Oh, I'm getting very V-shaped. That actually looks pretty good right there now. And we're getting better, but... Uh, yeah, we just gotta fine tune everything. And you have to know when to stop. <laughs> because remember, we still got a lot of sanding to do too. Yeah, that's the big lesson. Uh huh. The takeaway is, is if this is the first time you've ever shaped a neck, right? make it a little bigger than you think you're gonna want it. Mm -hmm. You can always take some off. Right. And if you're two, three millimeters bigger than you wanna be, but you got the shape right, you can always take more off. If you're two or three millimeters bigger and you got a V-neck, you can make that into a C if you don't want a V-neck. Yeah. If you're dead on and you got the shape is wrong, then what is it? Your design modification? Yes, exactly. <laughs> design modification. I'm tired. <laughs> Let's do something else for a while. Let's use power tools. All right. I love power <laughs> tools. <laughs> All right, well, we're having a good time. Hopefully everyone's getting a whole lot out of this video, but we're gonna shift gears and we're gonna shift to some different techniques now to give you an idea. It's a lot of work doing this, but what you can see is the techniques that are required to do it. Even if it's your first neck, you can take your time mm -hmm. with the right hand tools. You can get it down to where you want it to be for your guitar. Yep. And that's the key of what we're trying to demonstrate right here. Mm -hmm. Um, so we got a round over bit in there and what we're going to do is try to take a portion of the material that we would be having to take mm -hmm. with a rasp or whatever other tool um, off and do it on the router table. And the cool thing is it's going to put a, a nice consistent round over all the way down mm -hmm. um, and it's going to do it fast. Mm -hmm. um, and any time that you can use power I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and any time that you can turn wood into chips rather than dust, that's a good thing. Sure. Um, and anytime you can use the tool that they had in the 50s, that's a good thing too. <laughs> and they definitely had router tables and, and roundover bits. Yeah. Um, now you can use a bigger bit or you can use a smaller bit. Uh, you can do this in one pass or you can do it in multiple passes. Um, but the, uh, the, the thing to remember is the, you wanna lay out your, let get this in the camera, you wanna yeah. lay out roughly what your heel and headstock area will look like. Right. So you remember to stop pushing the piece through the tool before it goes into that area. This this spot here where we're not going to take any out. And yeah. this spot here where we're not going to take anything out. So you can see Steve's got some lines drawn where he mm -hmm. wants the um, Do not exceed. Yeah, do not the do not exceed area. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will think 
Well, so I just go to, you can't see those lines once this is on the, on the table. Mm -hmm. So they'll go, oh, I need to go to where the, yeah. the bearing hits that line. No. Yeah. You want to go to where the tool cut hits that line. Right. And because what's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to put this, this arc in there. Now you might, as you're going, go, I could go a little bit further, but if you just steer well away from that. Yeah and work a little bit more by hand, your patience will be rewarded. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. And we have the height of this bit set up only about three quarters of a millimeter uh, based upon I've got about 25 and three quarter millimeter uh -huh. and I want to keep it about 25 here prior to final shaping, sanding and stuff like that. That okay. gives me about a millimeter to the 12th fret marker where I, I want to end up right around 24 uh, for my taste and style and uh, about 21 up here. So I have a differential of about three millimeters yeah. between those two points. Yeah, and this will this will help take off a lot of the meat on the edge, and then we can work on that that angle. Yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. All right. All right. So this actually made a pretty fast work of that, didn't it? Well, yeah, it? and it's surprising how we didn't take off a lot, but we did take off quite a bit. And yeah. it, we were actually joking around. It's you could. You could almost play this. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it, it feels like a guitar it's neck. kind of starting to feel like that, yeah. Maybe a D-shape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with but, a ridge. Yeah, with a ridge. But you see, I, you, could, you could, with a bigger bit, you could take even more off. Yeah. And um, yeah, this, this is a really cool way to speed up the, the, the work, the process, yeah. and sweat less, which is something I should do. Yeah. <laughs> well, how don't we, why don't we move to another power tool and the drill press with a safety planer, and then I can take it down from Great. about 25 millimeters to about 22 millimeters. Okay. And then I can go hand tools from there to kind of blend all that together. Yeah, that'll be just like downtown. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, let's do it. All right, over here at the drill press, we have what is called a safety planer. Now, this is currently made by Stu Mac. It wasn't uh, created by them. They ended up buying the rights years ago when the other company went out of business, I believe. But the idea is there's three cutter heads underneath of there, and we can then set a depth and have this go right in to that material and begin to kind of plane it away. So in my case, I want to take three millimeters off from this point to that point. And so I've built this jig, and this jig has... Now, well, let me show you here. It has a clamping call that I put on there that has the approximate radius, about a 12 inch radius uh, to it. I covered that with leather just for a little grip. Um, and then underneath of there, what we have is a movable angle that can shift left or right to change how much of a degree slope is created. And I think I'm pretty well set here at about three degrees. So I just put my neck upside down on top of this and then I'll clamp outside of the safety planing area which would be right about there and make sure that I'm kind of center on the pressure. And then come to this side and do the same thing, make sure I'm centered and then clamp down there and that gives me a straight edge here. And that straight edge will then be tapered by three degrees or three millimeters I should say three millimeters uh, from one end to the other okay I set my depth stop over here to be a maximum of three millimeters depth of cut and then I just lowered it a, a portion of that way so it doesn't make contact until about a third of the way down and that way I'm going to take off a little I'll lower it some more take off a little more and then to the final depth and take off a little more then I'll make my measurements and do any adjustments if I need to uh, so let's go ahead and get this going. I'll turn the drill press on. I think uh, I found about 900. Yeah, let's go with about 900 on the RPMs. So that's, that's almost flush on this end and just about three millimeters on that end. So now we have the taper that we wanted. So now it's a matter of taking our files, rasps, spoke, uh, spoke shaves, whatever we want, and begin the rounding process.
All right, so here it is, the finish shaped neck. Have you ever had one of those days, like maybe you're recording a pretty extensive video, you know, when a friend comes over and you kind of uh, just really go off and have a good time and, uh, and just uh, do a great video together. And then in post-production, you find out that the audio was not recording. So here's the neck. <laughs> so Matt's no longer here right now. <clears throat> and I recorded like 30 minutes of shaping this neck with no audio attached to it. And uh, that's pretty frustrating. So here's what I've decided to do. I've decided to redo another neck. This is the one that I'm actually doing in the school project um, and I've been working on at the school during the demonstrations that I'm doing in the class. So now I'm going to have to come up with another neck to do the demonstration in the class for but I think I've got an extra one that I can uh, work that out with. So this neck is now uh, going to be used in this video and it's kind of cool actually because this one's got a nice flame uh, maple to it and so it'll be really cool looking. But let's get back to where we had left off. We had left off with completing the taper and I went back and I did it to this neck. I did the round over on the, uh, tab <clears throat> on the table router and then I went and used that jig to create a, a three millimeter taper. So I'm sitting just under 22 and about 25. So about three millimeters difference right there. So anyway, so now we're going <clears> to <throat> start the shaping and use maybe some different tools than what Matt had used. Um, <clears throat> I've got this little rest um, that I use for this type of process and it's a negative radius that then is able to kind of sit securely. One of the things that I like to do before shaping this is since I already have that taper in there, I drew a straight center line um, all the way down the middle of the neck. Okay, the thickness is about where I want the neck to be prior to sanding. So this is basically a do not touch line. So I'm going to draw up roughly a straight line that is about an eighth of an inch away from the fretboard and this creates a box area and that box area is an area I do not want to exceed. So I'll take down and make that C shape everything in here but I'll leave the center line alone and I'll leave the edges alone until I get to the sanding process. And once that's on there, that's rock solid. It gives me access to both sides of this fairly ergonomically. So I think it's a, a pretty good helper to have. Now we're going to start off with the Shinto. This is the one Matt really wanted to see. And so we got a chance to play with it a little bit. Of, you know, start digging in and taking that material down. And since it's pretty flat on the bottom, you can work in a very linear manner, which is kind of nice. Now, the other thing that Matt and I played around with was what I'm calling the hoss. This uh, farrier tool file, really aggressive looking on the, uh, on the one side, a little bit finer on that side. And I've never used it on a neck, but <clears throat> this thing takes off some material. Very cool, very cool. A um, little bit rough, it cuts well, but it leaves a little bit indentation. The finer side is kind of nice. <clears throat> it shaves without leaving as big of an indentation. So not a bad tool. I think I might uh, use this more in the future. <clears throat> the other tool that Matt was really talking about were these Proform. So I decided to give that a shot. And you know what? It does. Mm. 
it does slice pretty nice and you get all these all these curls so i would say uh matt's recommendation is spot on here for this thing so pretty pretty nice little tool <clears throat> and the other ones that i use a lot are the dragon rasps and these that are smaller side and i got a coarse one and i've got a fine one and depending upon where you are one may be better the finer one as you start getting close they're really good in these transition areas. <clears throat> you can really knock down the transition areas pretty, pretty fast and effectively. Let's bring you in pretty close here. We're really getting this uh, transition area knocked out and we're getting this nice and C-shaped here. Uh, as you can probably see, we have totally avoided that line so we still have room for some sanding processes to take place. And I'm only doing one side of the neck just for time's sake and it's the side that you can see. Um, and uh, as soon as we get this a little closer, I'm gonna stop and start working on the other side. So one of the things I like to use is this little simple block. This is just one inch thick of MDF that's sliced into, I don't know, three eighths to a half inch wide. And I put 80 grit sandpaper on either side. So now if I take and I draw lines on this one side and I begin to work the sanding block back and forth, I will find the low spots. So after a few minutes, I can see that my low spots are still right up in the transition area, uh, front and back. So I've got just a little bit of hump in the center that I gotta either take my, uh, my tools to it again, maybe take the fine dragon rasp and just work that high spot area and then try again. And that's looking a whole lot better. Maybe a little bit on either side again. I got to take it down slightly, um, just a little bit more. And then that'll be looking good. <clears throat> no one ever said this was going to be easy work. And both Matt and I agreed that uh, this is exhausting when we have uh, personally machines that do most of the work for us now in a sense that uh, Matt's got his deadhead sander that I'm sure most people, if you've been on his uh, YouTube page, you've seen videos of that. Uh, and me, I use uh, jigs or sometimes CNC to do a lot of this work. Uh, but again, this video series is for the class that I'm teaching and they don't have access. And honestly, I wouldn't want them to use tools like, like that to start off. Because if you're building your first neck, you got to learn how to do it with the hand tools. That's the single most important thing. And once you can become a craftsman of a neck, with hand tools, you can move into more advanced tools to save time, but you still understand the principles of what you're trying to create. That's why it's so important. So I'm just gonna go off camera here. I'm gonna finish up the other side. I'm gonna sand it a little bit more, get a little closer to where we wanna be, and then we'll come back and we'll talk more about it. I've got both sides done. I've got the transition areas roughed out, and now I'm gonna finish up some sanding processes. I've been working with my little uh, half inch wide piece of MDF and I've been working that back linear just to make sure that as I take it down a little bit more I stay perfectly flat. You could also use something like this. This is a short sanding beam from Stu Mac and uh, I got 80 grit on there and I can work that back and forth. The only thing about this is because it's steel, I gotta be careful not to ram it into my transition areas or I'll put little dents in there. So I have to be very careful. But it is a pretty, pretty good tool because it's extremely flat and that extra weight kind of gives you a little bit more, a little bit more bite of the sandpaper. So that's pretty good. The transition areas I like to use whatever size I need to off of maybe my oscillating drum sander. 
and I like to just uh, feather those out and get in the radius. <clears throat> One of the last things I like to do once I'm feeling good about all the transition areas and the flatness of the neck is a little 80 grit sandpaper. Nice and uniform. And I can work these inside areas again. I'll jump up to 120 grit and then I'll work it in my hand just like, just like I would be holding the guitar if I'm playing it. This kind of just helps it conform to the hand just a little bit, make it a little bit smoother. We're not changing it much with 120. I'm mostly, mostly just getting the 80 grit scratches out, but it starts feeling pretty good. And I'll work those transition areas one more time with that 120 grit paper to again get the 80 grit scratches out and then ultimately I'll go up to 220 and 320 <clears throat> it's a messy process but really it's quite rewarding when you get done that neck and it just feels right and it looks right it's pretty awesome well <clears throat> two for the price of one I suppose here's the first one that I did that the audio did not record for whatever reason, probably incompetence on my part. That's why I need a cameraman. Anybody in the Denver area want to be my cameraman, let me know. So that one is looking good. And then this is the one I was going to do <clears throat> at school, uh, but I'll, I'll take another Strat style neck because that's what I'm building there. I'll take another Strat style uh, neck with me and and demonstrate with that one, but this one is is very very cool. Look at all that flame, nice reddish rosewood fretboard, headstock adjustment. So let's return back to the original closing to this video with Matt. All right, so. This is how we're gonna wrap up this episode. I went and kind of cleaned up this neck. You can kind of see I did the transition area here. I worked back and I stopped short of the heel area just for time's sake. I left mine all rough because the more you play it, the smoother it will get. <laughs> <laughs> but what we showed you here today is maybe two different ways to approach shaping and contouring a neck with hand tools and a couple machines, mm -hmm. but still using everything that my students will have available to them at the school. Yeah. So I think that's the takeaway, is you can use simple tools, you can shape the neck, you can get it to where you need it to be, take it slow, take it easy, and, and you can be successful. Sometimes the simpler the better too, I think. Yeah. Um, and whether you're using hand tools or power tools, make sure to always stop and check and, and use a little finesse and stay stay a little proud of where you want to end up being and sand down to that and you'll be you, your patience will be rewarded and yeah it's going to yeah. be a good thing steve i had so much fun hanging out with you today yeah thanks for having me over at your shop and specifically thanks for having me over to work on necks because um i love making guitars but making your own neck is something that really separates the guitar builders from the guitar assemblers right. now don't take that the wrong way. Assembling guitars is a lot of fun and it's a very rewarding hobby. But if you want to build your own guitars, you got to eventually make necks and man, making necks is really fun and there's a lot of cool ways to do that. There is and that's the, the learning lesson here and I think this is the great thing about having Matt come over and kind of sharing different ideas and such. You can always learn something from another luthier and you can always experiment yourself and figure out different ways to do it that work for you. There is no one right way. If it works for you, then it's right for you. Yep, yep. You Build know? on the fundamentals of you know, what you're teaching everyone at school, build off those fundamentals and switch up tools and try different new things. And, and y you might not 
you might not hit a homer every time, no. but yeah, you're having fun, you're in the shop and you're yeah, yeah. and you're gonna figure out techniques that work great for you. I mean, I showed you some of the hand tools, the dragon wraps we both love, and some of these other things. And I have a new tool in my shop. Look at this. I've got one of these cool little planes. It says <laughs> to Steve, stay excellent with excellent spelled wrong. That's right, because I want to keep it excellent. <laughs> I didn't put enough L's in there, so yeah. <laughs> but that's awesome. So Matt, pleasure having you Thanks here. Thanks for having me over, Steve. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. And until next time. Build it yourself if you're so smart. That's what I do. <laughs> excellence. It's all about excellence. Keep that in your mind, all right? That's right. All right, take care. Thanks, Steve. Bye -bye. See y'all.